know, in the world of business, that big, beautiful business community, we have this thing that's going on called the Great Resignation. Now, I've been in business for now 20 plus years. I've been a manager 20 years before that. And there was a lot of people that just went to work every day that were unhappy. They were miserably unhappy every single day. And so it didn't take the COVID pandemic pandemic to really get us to think about what's going on in our workplaces, what's going on with business in general, and how unhappy the employees are, the staff are. That's been going around probably since the first day that the first dollar was ever spent on an item. Today, we're going to just talk about a solution to maybe helping some of those businesses get out of that so-called funk of having employees not be happy, not have that, uh, that, that, that experience that they're looking for, and just add some fun to it. Now, I'm not talking fun like tomfoolery fun, which is from time to time, and that can, that can work. I'm talking about just having enough fun each day to where we feel good, we're passionate about what we do, we're productive, but at the same time, we want to come back the next day. We want to go to bed happy, and we want to wake up saying, good, I get to go back to that fun place to work again. So with that being said, we're going to talk about a very, very unique experience called Camp Breakaway. But before I got introduced to Camp Breakaway, I got introduced to Camp Wiley. During my time living in Dallas, I became friends with Tony Hill, an ex-Dallas Cowboy wide receiver who had now turned radio broadcaster. And he invited me to two or three games every year that that he was broadcasting. I got to sit up in the booth with him. My past said press on us. I got to go down the field. I thought I was really, really cool. But the things that really interested me most was walking in across the parking lot to the stadium and seeing all the tailgaters. That's where you really get the experience of the football game or the sporting event that's happening is through the tailgaters. So one day we drive down together and it was the game between LSU and Texas A&M. And it was a big game, but it was on Thanksgiving. So the parking lot was full, the stadium was full, but I'll tell you the difference between Texas A&M fans and LSU fans is only the difference is, is the food. We parked where we had to walk through the LSU fan base. And let me tell you, my nose was burning, my eyes were burning because the smell of that Cajun food being cooked just, I, I couldn't resist it. I was dying. I, I wanted to taste every one of them. And so Tony's walking around. We get up to the booth. We're talking. They get everything sound checked and whatever they do before the game for the technical reasons. And now we're all having some short time to talk. And everybody said, boy, did you smell that food from the LSU fans? And we're all just talking just greatly. And during that conversation, when Tony goes to these events, he's wearing a Super Bowl ring. And we all told Tony, you should stop next time because you could probably get any food you want because you're wearing a Super Bowl ring and everybody would love to meet you and get a picture of that Super Bowl ring. And Tony goes, no, I can't do that. And I said, well, the next time we come here, you and I are going to do that. So I held my word. So the next game, I think it was between Alabama and uh, and A&M. And the food was cooking, but we're now parked on the other side of the stadium where now we're walking through the Texas A&M fans and we're checking it out. You know, we got there early enough where we didn't have to rush in and Tony and I are walking through the parking lot. We're walking where all the tailgaters are and we, we, we feel this vibration, this energy coming. So we stop. Everybody sees Tony. He looks like an athlete. Still looks like an athlete, but I think they noticed that Super Bowl ring. So all of a sudden now, Tony is the hit of the party, and I'm checking out the food. I'm the wingman. I'm checking out the food. I have never seen so much food. It was, it was another big game, and they were frying this. They were frying that. And so after about a half hour, we got a couple nibbles here and there, but Tony had to get back to, to the uh, booth. The next year, it's now Thanksgiving Day again, and we parked on the side of Texas A&M. So we're now walking around, and in the exact same place as we found them before, there's Camp Wiley. And Camp Wiley is three generations 
of, of the Wiley family who have gone to Texas A&M. So it's, it's a big crowd and it's a really intense crowd. I mean, they, they, they bleed Texas A&M. And so out of the blue, I hear someone from Camp Wally say, hey, is that Tony? And all of a sudden now, Tony is now coming back. And now because it's the second year, everybody is checking us out, checking, checking Tony out. He's got the Super Bowl ring. They're all posing with Tony in, in the ring. And by this time, we are now indoctrinated into Camp Wiley. And so what does a good host do? They gave Tony and I each our own individual deep fried turkey wing that we got to take back to the stadium. And in those stadiums up in the press booths, they offer you a nice little buffet, but nothing like a deep fried turkey leg. So when we got up there, Tony did a sound check and we go to eat our, our, our meal, everybody's looking at us like, where in the heck do you get that? Because it was, if you think about the old cartoon, the Flintstones, it was that brontosaurus burger or whatever they had that tipped over Fred Flintstones. It was huge. And I mean, we enjoyed every bite of it, but it changed how Tony really got a chance to experience football because as a player, you can't walk through the tailgate parties. As a, as a broadcaster, you probably shouldn't because if you eat the wrong food, you're going to be belching the whole time. But we got Tony in the right place. But all of a sudden now, he started looking forward to the game of football that he was going to be calling for one reason, one reason only, Camp Wiley. It, it gave him a new level of, of experience, but a new level of energy to go to those games. And so I want to bring that, I want to talk about bringing that same feeling, that same indoctrination to the workplace in today's modern world. And to help me with that, I brought one of my favorite people of all time, a high school football coach from Sandpoint, Idaho, Coach Paloa. His, his name really is Satini Paloa, but we call Coach Coach. And so today you're going to get introduced to Coach Satini Paloa. So Coach, welcome. And thank you for joining us. Now, I, 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 I have a monitor on because I know that you and I, over the 20 plus years that we've known each other, you and I can go down a lot of rabbit holes in our conversation. So today we're going to talk about what you created with the help of a lot of colleagues, Camp Breakaway. And so before we start talking about Camp Breakaway and really what that is and what it can be, how it can be used in the workplace, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about you and who you are? So you got to go all the way back to Pongo, Pongo, Samoa. It's, a, it's an actual place. Uh, my grandfather came over from American Samoa in 1924 as part of the Royal Samoans, a vaudeville Broadway act. And he probably was in well over 100 movies. He was one of the founding members of the Screen Actors Guild. And so my, my dad and the whole family, they performed. And I think the last movie my dad was in when he was when he was an All-American at Pasadena Junior College when they won back-to-back -back national championships, and his last movie was Sadie Thompson with Rita Hayward, and he was he was the bar boy, um, you know. So, so really, we come from a Polynesian background, and my dad uh, was an All-American. He was drafted by the Chicago Bears in the '50s. He was he's in I think five or six different Hall of Fames. And he was our high school coach and our high school athletic director where me and my brothers, we played for him. And the program that we went through was a phenomenal program. And, it, and a lot of it had to do with who my dad was and how he was raised and what his background was. And so I went into the same profession. And for the reason was to, was to basically give the same experience to high school kids that, that I had received from my dad and me and my brothers and all my buddies for, for decades in Southern California. And, and so I uh, had a lot of success doing it, you know, been coach of the year in two different States. Uh, I'm in, I'm in two hall of fames. Uh, I'm up for a third one this year. So, um, you know, we won, we won titles. We've done all that kind of stuff, but we really have done, is we rebuilt high school programs. And the way that we did it was, was really was to give young men a unique experience and that wasn't really about winning and losing. It was about being part of something that was bigger than themselves. 
So, so, so I love that. that. And I have to say that I've never met a coach. And I've met a lot of coaches, but I've never met a coach that was so connected to his players, the entire team, connected to the parents and to the full fan base in the community. And, you know, this was one thing that really always, you know, led me to want to know more about coach because you just had a unique way of that connection. And now as I learn more about Camp Breakaway and your philosophies, I believe that those philosophies and even the idea of Camp Breakaway can be and should be used somewhere in the business world. So with that being said, let's really define what a coach is. Well, you know, well, I mean, everybody has a lot of different, you know, definitions of a coach. And so let's hear from you because your name to me is coach. What is a coach? Well, for me, you know, a coach is a person that makes the journey about you and not about the coach or about the program, but really centers the journey that everybody's going to go on about a group of individuals and then tying them together. And and in doing so, I think you can reach athletes and people in a different level because when, when, when you take that approach, it, it, you really start to untap what their potential is. You're trying to get them to realize they're much more than what they think they are. And they have much more to give, much more to offer. But in order to do that, you have to sort of peel back the onion. And, and I, I find a lot of people that, you know, I, 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 you know, I played a lot of sports growing up. We played everything growing up. And I found that a lot of people would draw lines in the sand and, you know, make certain declarations. And it was, and really through my experience and dealing with a lot of different people was when that happens, you made it about you. And what we always tried to do was we tried to make it about the individual and their journey and what was what became important to them. So, so, and and I and I love that part about the individual and the journey, but also a coach in this case has a team. So you have a, a group of individuals that make up that team. And so, as a coach, as you just described, what makes that person so valuable to? the team, and to the organization. You know, so Roger, if you have a group of people and you walk into the room, right, and you're going to be part of something, first thing you're doing is you're sizing everything up and you're trying to figure out how do I fit in? How does this benefit me? And if you can take people on, on, a, on a journey where they start to understand what their potential is, but they also understand that everybody else in the room has a certain level of humanity, and the other people in the room have something to offer, you know, because, you know, in, a, in an athletic endeavor, first thing is everybody wants to be able to play. Well, as soon as they start playing, the next thing they want to do is, well, then we, that's not good enough. Then you want to win. Well, you, you find out real quick that you can't do it by yourself, right? So once you, once you start to, to peel back the diff, different aspects of, of what the journey really is, that they have to realize this is what I bring to the table. This is what everybody else brings to the table. And together, we are much more powerful and much more energetic. And we can have a much better time when we start thinking about, about that. And what you really end up doing is, is that you get a group of people to play for each other. You know, so we sit there, you know, and at first it's all about me. But then you start to get past that where it's like, it's really not all about me. It's what can I do to help Roger? And when I can, when, when, when you get a group of people that are starting to bring every day they show up is how can I help Roger be better? Right. And Roger's thinking about what he can do to make me better. Well, then you have something that's really special. And it's the age old adage, you know, the chicken before the egg or the horse, the horse before the cart. You know, do you win games because people get along or do you get along and then you win games? And I have found that and it's really not. Again, I, I hate to just use the word winning. Because you can have a lot of a lot of success. I've had I've had some really good teams that necessarily, you know, didn't win. They didn't win every championship. They lost games. But but how they reached their potential, how they played together, how they interacted together, and the success that they that they achieved was probably much greater than they could have in another format. Okay, 
So let's get to the fun part of this conversation. What is the purpose of Camp Breakaway? Well, I'm going to go back to my Polynesian roots. So if you go over to the island, you spend any time in the islands where you have, you have no wants, right? I mean, it's warm, so you don't worry about weather, right? Um, you've got water, you've got food. So those necessities are taken away. So in an island culture, you'll find that there's tons of game play. A lot of singing, a lot of dancing, a lot of eating, and a lot of game play. You know, it's how they occupy their time, and it's what it's what it makes the culture so tight. Well, what Breakaway does, and, and it goes back to my dad and back to my grandfather and being part of that culture. You know, there was always a pot of a pot of food on the stove, and they're always playing games, whether it was card games or whether it was whether it was games outside. It didn't matter. They're always playing and they were always eating. And so that was really who I was growing up. And it was really about what we did. And I got exposed to uh, a unique individual who became a friend of mine who played for a guy named Frosty Westerling, who was the head coach of Pacific Lutheran, whose background was, and you can think about this, Frosty was a Marine drill instructor with a master's in educational psychology. Now, those are two Pretty, pretty different ends of the spectrum. And what Frosty did at, at, at PLU, where I think he played in 10 or 11 national championships and won eight or nine of them. And then later on, he was on a speaking tour about all this. And the, and the tag on Frosty's Pacific Luther teams were, nice guys finish first. So at the start of the season, when everybody else was getting in shape and, and stalling offenses and defenses, Pacific Lutheran went to the beach and played games, and none of it had to do with the sport of football. The word wasn't even brought up. They would have teams and they would compete. And, and really, there's a lot of educational research about what happens when you go through this process. And Camp Breakaway, for us, was you had, to, you had to go at least 20 hours. So we went three days and two nights to a camp. So what, what you hope to have happen during breakaway is that people start to understand that everybody has value in this group. And, and then by doing that, you get a group buy-in. So that once you start the season and you, and you get adversity, I mean, I don't care what it is, life is going to handle you adversity. And all of a sudden now, we handle that adversity a whole lot better than our opponents do. And all the internal struggles within the team is that what you really want to figure is, is that everybody's got each other's back. And that's what Camp Breakaway does. So I want you to share with the audience here because the tipping point on why you brought Camp Breakaway to Sandpoint High School football season is, is no different than what a lot of times what experience in the world of business. You walk into some businesses it could be retail it could be restaurants and you can just sense the vibe that it's not healthy there it's not a good thing there and what did you experience and what was the reason for you to bring in camp breakaway to the high school there well the longer you do anything with a group of people you start to realize that at it's not about talent it's about attitude attitude is everything and in any group you're going to have clicks and you're going to have a group of people that knock other people down to pick themselves up. There's mocking, there's, there's petty jealousies, there's bullying. There's all these things, and that, all of that is going to impede performance. Most, most teams beat themselves. Most teams, you know, they, they divide and conquer themselves from the, within. And so what, what you hope to do with Camp Breakaway is you, is you dissolve a lot of that stuff so that all of a sudden everybody, they look at each other differently. They look at that person down there and they go, that's somebody's son, right? That, that's, you know, that, that person's got a father or grandfather, you know, you have a brother or sister, and, and, and they, have, they have as much right to be here and as much value. And they bring something to the table that I never thought that they had because we all have different strengths and weaknesses. And when you, when you get that and you instill, there's, there's other aspects that we're not talking about, but there's components of this. Then, then all of a sudden, you have something that's it's just a much tighter bond between these people. And now they're into problem solving and helping each other out rather than, you know, hiding stuff from each other and talking about each other behind each other's back. You know, all, all, the, all the different petty stuff that you see 
And, and that's, that's what we use breakaway was to really speed up that process of togetherness. And we're all in this together, you know, and as one of the concepts we say is, you know, we can, we can come at you like this as an open hand of five fingers working separately, or we can close this hand and make a fist. And now we come at you and we're a whole different animal. And that's really what we're talking about. We're just trying to draw everybody into this tight knit group that has each other's back. Okay. Now, just like any fan, we have an eye, one eye on the game. We have one eye on the scoreboard. In business, we have one eye on the game of business. And we have one eye on the key metrics. So what were some of the tangible takeaways that you saw as a result of uh, introducing Camp Breakaway to your team and coaching staff? Well, you know, you, you, people talk a lot about, well, there's a couple of things. Number one is, is, uh, do your job, right? Well, that's such e easier said than done. You get hit in the face with something. You know, stuff blows up. You get hit by adversity. Well, pretty soon you're, you're, you're not like, you don't rely on your training and your technique and your resources around you and the people to help you. You start trying to do different things and shortcuts. And pretty soon you're a lot farther off than when, when you just got hit in the face. You know, the, 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 the type of days you've seen it in, a, in athletics all the time. You know, all of a sudden it's a tight game and all of a sudden, you, you know, a guy gets hit, there's a turnover, boom, they score, they kick off, the guy gets hit, he fumbles again, they score again. And within three minutes, you're down by 21 points. You made a bad situation worse because you lost focus, you took your eye off the ball. So the whole idea is to keep people on focus, on doing their job, but also, it's also enjoying the fact that it's, 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 it's the journey. Right. It's not the destination. It's the process that we go through. It's the day, day by day endeavor and the interaction. When you get when you get that those ties where people are helping each other and that process, you know, you may not win today. But if you stay steady and it's the tortoise and the hare, you stay at it. Right. And, and you're and you're enjoying the process and you realize that it's a, you know, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint that you're going to you're going to start to win these battles and that's what would happen to our teams we might we might lose two games in a row but all of a sudden we go on a 5 6 7 game winning streak you know and it's because we didn't lose faith we didn't start to scatter we stayed in the process we picked each other up we did the, we did all there were all these different concepts Roger about we you know uh, I could talk about the six components but finding the good right you know every day we found the good and we might you know, it's, it's like we might lose on the scoreboard, but, you know, for our perspective was, well, we didn't really lose on the scoreboard. We just ran out of time, right? To the game, if we could have one more quarter, we'd have got these guys, you know, because we were just, we were just steady. So it really was, it, we tried not to spend a lot of time looking at the scoreboard, but eventually that's how you get measured. But in the, in the process of doing that, the scoreboard really tilted our way more often than not. So let's get off the gridiron and go into the, workplace, what are business owners and team leaders going to experience and what are they going to see as a positive result if they brought in some type of camp breakaway to their workplace? Well, well I think what you would, would see is the same thing that we, we saw. And, and you see it all the time in, uh, in really successful families or organizations is the ability to work together. And, and that it, it's, it's, a, it's easy to be said, but it's hard to accomplish. So the process of breakaway was, again, people would understand as we went through this journey, through this, through these, this process, through these days, playing these silly games. And there was a prize at the end. But, but, this, but playing these, all these different games, they started to realize it didn't matter. It became about problem solving and working together. And... Again, that that's the key to everything. When you have that, you're you're gonna stuff's gonna happen. You're gonna solve it faster. Um, you're gonna enjoy solving it because you're gonna enjoy being around the people. You're gonna look at that person in, in the room is not a threat, but as wait, well, this guy has, or this person or this woman can do something that I don't do. They're better at this than I am, but I'm better at this than they are. And together, we 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 become a much more powerful entity. And I, I mean, I, I see it in, in families all the time. I just had a bunch of cousins over from the weekend 
And I can tell you, we I don't know how many different games we play. At night, we're out playing kick the can. During the day, we we all these different card games. We were playing Foursquare, Cornhole, right? And these kids who haven't spent a lot of time together, I would say by the second day, they, they you know, they were just like a, a, a bunch of monkeys in a circus. They, they, they got all the barriers went down, Roger. They all knew each other. They were just, they couldn't wait to do the next thing. You know, I mean, they were doing it, playing Frisbee, playing catch with a baseball. They're out in the boat in the inner tube. You know, all these different things, you know, they're laughing and they're joking, but they, they, they felt safe. They felt, uh, they felt part of the, part of the deal. Nobody was isolated. Nobody's on the sidelines. Nobody was left alone. Right. Everybody was like, come on, you know, and they, they were part of something. And, you know, when you do, when you do that pretty soon, it just all, all the bad behavior. I don't, this game sucks. I don't want to do this. Why are we doing this? This isn't any fun. It all goes away. And they just start, they just start playing. And that's the whole idea. You know, I, I had these, I had these cousins who hadn't really been around each other a lot. And at the end, at the end of, th- by the third day, they, they had played more games. This is just in our house. They had played more games, had more interaction, had more fun. Shoot, the last night, you know, and I'm 67 years old, and they're going, Grandpa, can we go back out and play another game? Kick the can? And I go, no. I said, uh, your dad had to go to work, and thank God, because I'm dead. <laughs> you know, but they wanted to keep going. Yeah. And they didn't start off that way. They came yeah. in. They didn't really. They didn't all really know me, you know, because they we hadn't been together. It was kind of like we came from four corners. And now, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that, that be nice to have, have that type of energy, positive energy, at the workplace? Oh, but now, yeah. Well, yeah. You you feel you feel good in the office. You feel good. You know, the yeah. whole thing is, you know, it's it's the locker room. You know, locker room can be a safe place, but you look around. You look at. I don't care what the level is. High school, college, pro, even even little kids. I mean, if you don't develop a healthy work environment, you'll see. I mean, modern day over in Southern California, you know, they're one of the best high school programs in the nation, but they got a huge hazing, bullying problem of how, how they're treating each other. Now that's a culture that's gone made the wrong turn. You'll see it in the NFL. The, the Miami Dolphins had that one lineman. Nobody liked them, you know, and they, and, and and they had a lot of you know. Uh, you know their, their interaction within the group was not healthy, and that team did not do very well. Okay. So anytime that you bring in something that sounds beautiful, sounds like it, why, why didn't I think of that kind of mentality? There's always going to be some, some setbacks, some obstacles that we have to face to, to get the team, the organization from point A to point B. What were some of those obstacles? What were some of those obstacles that you faced? Well, the naysayers are huge. You know, so basically, you know, because I grew up this way, and this is who I am just because it's who I am. You know, if, if you and I are together very long, we're going to be doing something, you know. Um, and and so, you know, within within my coaching staff, so, I mean, you can just imagine. I mean, the season starts. You've got, you've got uh, three weeks to get ready for that first game. You got to install offense, defense, special teams, right? Uh, you got to get in shape. I mean, that's all the stuff you got to do. Everybody, you know, it's like, it's like a horse race. The gates open and the horses have left the gate. And what are we doing? Our gate opens, we pitch a tent and we're roasting hot dogs. You can imagine my coaching staff. They're going, coach, why are we spending this money? Why are we spending this time? Our opponents are all getting ahead of us. And I said, I said, what you have to understand is this is a long race. And I said, we're going to get there faster because once we go to work, our guys are going to work together more efficiently. They're going to enjoy the process. They're going to make, I mean, I, I will tell you, you know, when I grew up and I played football until I was, oh, gosh, in my 30s, okay? And I can tell you, going to the start of football season is awful. It's hot. You know, I mean, it's double days, three a days. It's a grind. I mean, it's like it's it's worse than boot camp, right? So our guys, the start of football season comes, they can't wait. I mean, it's a totally different paradigm shift. I mean, they can't wait to be there. Then once we start doing the stuff, they're having so much fun doing it together. Once we start doing all this stuff, because of the other aspects that we, we draw into it, you know, they, they – 
They can't, they can't wait to come to practice. They, they can't wait to come to the weight room. room. They can't wait because they don't know what's going to happen next. The guys, guys are guys are getting better at such a fast rate in everything. Because, you know, when you say, again, I'll go back to this. It's a real simple thing. Do your job. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You get hit in the face with anything in life and go do your job. And you just got, you're blinking. Well, all of a sudden, you know, you've turned to the right, you've turned to the left. Your opponents are three steps ahead. All right, guys, you hit them in the face, they don't even blink. They don't move, right? They understand that not only am I holding my ground here for me, but I got I got guys on each side of me and a guy in front of me and a guy behind me that are counting on me, and we are interlocked. We are linked together. And I'll t- I'll t- I will tell you, we, move, we, we learn so much faster. We learn, we have so much more enjoyment in the process of learning because when we're doing it, I mean, other, again, you have to understand the aspects of, of, of what I'm talking about. So let, let me, if I can share a couple of these with you, what I'm talking about, right? So what you're talking about is you're putting, and, and when you're going through this stuff, you're putting together values and traditions, effective communication, fun, right, and goals, all this stuff. Well, now, I mean, fun is a huge part of it, but now you're setting goals, you're achieving these goals. You're, you're, you're enjoying the process. You're celebrating. We're celebrating your goals. You're celebrating my goals. I mean, everything is, is in a positive nature. The negative stuff we deal with, but we don't make it. It's like, we'll fix that, right? It's like, when do we get back on the success train? Anything that comes up is simply an opportunity to fix it. But everything we're trying to do, Roger, is hit the next mark. Hit the next mark, and because we're hitting the next mark, and then we're high fiving it, you know, and we're and we're, we're we have all these different things that we're doing, and guys are just there. I mean, they're laughing. If you've ever been, if anybody's ever been to a luau, if anybody has ever been to over to the islands, like I just got back from Tahiti, and you watch every afternoon at four o'clock, these people have worked all day. They're playing bocce ball. But they're not playing. They're, not only are they just playing bocce ball, they got four or five guys over there playing music. They got a grill right there with probably some chicken or some fish or, or something. So these guys are playing bocce ball. They're playing. The guys are playing music. They're eating at the same time. They're cheering. All, they have all these different chants, right? And it's just a big party. And that's how they end every day. Well, we would do that during practice. We're playing music, you know. Um, competition within the games, competitions within the groups that were part of installing stuff. You know, that we, it was all part of the deal. The game playing never stopped. Yeah. So all you owners out there who want to who say that they're building that team, that they have a team, do your employees really want to come back and dance and cheer and party with you at the end of each day? Or do they just want to go home and get rid of this whole situation? You know, so th- this is really the whole idea behind Camp Breakaway and coach what you just described on the field, on the practice field, in the game situation, in the locker room, that can all be related back to the workplace. And well, so what, you're, what you create, Roger, is a thing called FOMO. Fear of missing out because it's every day's a party. And I mean, you know, and you said it earlier, we worked our tails off, but but we were having so much fun doing it. And it wasn't messing around. It was just, I mean, the, I mean, guys are running their butts off, but the smile on their face, you know, I mean, uh, just was, you know, would, would, would tell you. And they, could, they, they didn't want to go home, and they couldn't wait to come back the next day because it was the same thing all over again. Wouldn't a business owner just love to hear those words out of their employee's face? And, you know, I don't know if I'd really, in a workplace, call it a party and more just a celebration that the day was good. A celebration. And that, yeah. And so, Coach, I knew this was going to be a fun and good uh, conversation. I can't thank you enough, but why don't you leave the audience with some really – additional piece of inspiration from uh, the great coach <laughs> i'll give you this one okay we'll sing you a song uh hooray for roger hooray at last hooray for roger because he's a horse's ass <laughs> <laughs> you know you imagine 30 people singing that at the end because roger just got it just hit a new mark yep right 
or I mean, these were just some of the things we would do, or we would say we call a guy's name. I mean, I could I could show you stuff even in a losing game, finding the good at the end of the day, finding the good every day. I mean, we sit there, you know, and you're talking about a team that just lost a heartbreaker, twenty-one to twenty, and they're in the locker room, and and, and they're and they're sitting there, and you're saying, Roger. You know, what during the game inspired you? And you turn around and you say, when, when, when Coach Paloa went spring across the field and dove for that ball, I just said, I, I, had, I had to keep going. You know, and there's stuff like that in the, in the workplace. I mean, you could just think about all the stuff. And I can remember me and my brothers, when we, we were going to college, this isn't fun, right? We were doing, we had to jackhammer ditches, Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's July, it's 95 degrees out, the, the ground is rock hard, and we're, we got jackhammed, right? So we just turned it into a game. Everything became a game. So we got this jackhammer, and we're saying, okay, you know, you're up. How many inches can you get in the next 30 seconds? You know, and you're just churning away like crazy. And then the next guy would go. And pretty soon, we didn't care how hot it was. We were sitting there going, he got an inch. I got to get an inch and a half, you know, and that's and everything we did. We, we, the, 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 the poor guy, the construction guys would look at us because we, we all we would work together when we were in college. We'd all come home. We all grew up in the same thing. But everything we did was a game. And these guys would look at us and go, what's the matter with these guys? Well, we're just playing. We, it's, yeah, it's work, but we're going to have fun doing it. Right. And so it's just how it is. Well, Coach, I can't thank you enough for being my guest. Uh, I, I, I hope, hope that, that a lot of people can resonate with that and uh, with, with Camp Breakaway and just bringing that fun and that experience, positive experience back to the workplace. Thank you very much. And I hope that we do plenty more uh, podcasts together. Well, Roger, whatever you want to do, whatever I can do to help you. Thank you. My podcast wouldn't be the same if it wasn't for my sponsors and my uh, great supporters. So let me take this opportunity to thank each and every one of them. First of all, I want to thank Rebecca at Custom Bookkeeping and Accounting, delivering trustworthy bookkeeping services since 2003. Dave and Dara at Virtues Matter, making this world a much happier place to be with their Virtues card apps, coaching, and workshops. Stephen at Buller Accounting, giving business owners depth and insight to their numbers. Eric and his team at Ivy Cat Web Design, the real superheroes of web development and design. Jennifer and Jean at the Seavers Real Estate Team, serving Pierce and Kitsap counties with their home buying and selling needs. Maury at the Maury Method, the world's only brainwave and trainment engineer, helping everyone have more clarity, less stress, and overall better brain health. Priya at Pivot My Profit, helping individuals and businesses have better control of their finances and more money at the end of their day. Melissa at the Soul Vibe Energy High, the queen of the aha moments, helping individuals find those holes in their cups, repair the hole, and gain back their positive energy. And finally, Rick at West Sound Recording. You talk, they do all the rest. Thank you, Rick, for all your efforts with the production and editing of my podcast.